Hey, dude. Hey, what? What is that? I'm a cowboy. <laughs> Did you step in some palm foam? No, no. That's the new <laughs> style. Decoration on my boots. Yep, that's a pond builder's boots. Hey, it's lunch time and we're making progress. This thing's completed. Turned out pretty nicely. Water level's about right here. We got this all rocked in, skimmer set. You can find rocks like this. They work real nice to kind of hide the skimmer. Until we're done, we'll get a piece of driftwood over here. Some foam and some moss up here. We won't be able to see any plastic and that's the goal. We're gonna start working on our stream. It's gonna go up in there towards the excavator. Visibility from that kitchen window, from this patio, and from a patio over that direction. Okay, so what we just did here, this is going to be the first pool in the stream. And I, to decide how deep I find my spillway rock, which is basically, it's underneath all of this liner, but that spillway rock is going to determine the water height. So I set my laser on there and I just, if I do want to do a six, eight, 10 inch deep pool, then that's how deep I make it. I set it off the spillway rock. In this case, I wanted a big deep pool, so I made it 10 inches deep. So I set my laser on here, went down 10 inches, boom. So I'm gonna have a 10 inch deep pool. And this shelf, it's important to either have it deeper than the spillway or at the very least level with the spillway because if you have it at all higher, it's not gonna build a pool. It's just gonna run straight down over the liner over your spillway rock, but I want it to fill up and make a deep pool, so I made it 10 inches below the spill, the height of the spillway rock. So that way it fills up 10 inches of water before it spills out over. I don't know if that makes any sense. The next thing I do, I make sure that I excavate this area huge. I might place my next framing boulders for the waterfall here, and then the pool is actually only gonna be this big, but I wanna make sure when I flip back that I have the room to set my rocks where I want. If I excavate big and flat, I know it's not gonna go this big. I'm not gonna be setting my framing borders back against here. It's probably gonna be front here, but that allows me the freedom to go where I want when I set my rocks. Then once I have them all set and I like it, I flip front the liner and I fill my berm in up against the rocks. That's the easiest way to do it. It gives you the freedom to set the rocks where you need to put them. So let's, Get ready to build the stream. I put in my rock pad and my liner now, and this is the area that I had excavated. So here you can see my spillway rock. These determine the water hike of the pool that I have in my stream. So if you wanna put a six inch deep pool, you come down six inches. You wanna do a 10 inch deep pool, come down 10 inch deep. So, I wanted a deep one, so I came down to that level. And that's very important because I think it looks naturalistic if it comes off of a waterfall, builds up into a pool, and then spills over into the next one. If you get these nice and deep, then you can avoid the look of water running through gravel from one, if, if the liner hike here was at this hike and went slightly uphill, then water would spill off the spillway rock, the next spillway rock, and run down over the gravel and fall over this one without ever pooling up. So that's why we excavate this so deep. And another, this is a prime example of me not excavating big enough. Say I want to place a boulder, that nest was up right into here for the berm of the pool, except I can't, because I have dirt there. I should have dug way out here, set my rock here, flip front my liner, and filled the dirt in again. That's how I'm gonna do all around here. So these framing boulders, I'm probably gonna be placing right here, but I have the freedom to move all the way back here if I want. This stupid wall of dirt is not gonna get in my way. So maybe you can picture that a little bit better. Let's build waterfalls. Okay, after working all day in the pond, 
we're finally doing some fun things. We typically come out here with a rock pal with our excavator and we pretend and put things together and push rocks around with our excavator until we have something that we like. Here's what we're thinking. This is probably the most visual falls of the project. You're gonna see it from just about everywhere, kitchen window, patio. This is the primary falls. I wanna do the most impressive thing I can with them. We're gonna be maxing out our flow on this falls. Hopefully we have enough. But what I'm thinking, split stream, spillway in here into a little pool, another spillway about here, and trying to utilize this dished out shape. I love these rocks. That was just carved by water. Anyone can see that. And hopefully get a horse tail off the side. That's, I'm a bit skeptical about that, but we'll see. I like how sunken in it's gonna look. And yeah, back in the times when there was high waters, that's when this was carved out. But the water level isn't quite as high as it used to be. This, another, this is my favorite, just saying. Another spillway rock up here, falling into here, and then a little pool in here, and then another spillway rock here, right like that. So it's gonna fall into a little pool into here, maybe six inch drop, and then I now can bring water off of here, off of here, and off of here into a little pool here. And then we're gonna put this one in front. Now it's very important that this one isn't too high because I don't want to obstruct any view. As a matter of fact, we'll probably have it pretty much 100% underwater. We're just gonna have the very tip top of the middle, the sides kind of taper, the middle just sticking out above water just a little bit. And then we're gonna foam the bottom of this rock to divert the water. So there's not gonna be a falls, say water level's about here. There's not gonna be a falls that's just gonna divert the water around this rock. So the little bubbles and that turbulence of the falls is gonna shoot out the side here and out over there. We're ready to strap them in and start getting them in nice and level. They're sitting kind of crooked right here. Hey, good Monday morning to y'all. We're up here on our pond project, our 16 by 21 uh, koi pond with a 12 foot stream. And um, the pond is rocked in. We rinsed it and we're starting to clean it right over there. Now, now that I have over excavated, I have set all my rock in. I now flip the liner in over top everything. And now I can backfill my dirt up against. See, I had dug too big here. I set all my rocks in, so I flipped the liner up over the edge, and now I can backfill with my excavator all around here. I already backfilled on the back side, and here we repeat the whole process again for the last pool and the last falls of the stream. Here again, this had been way out here, but I backfilled that all in. Here's my spillway rock. So I'm gonna have about a five or a six inch pool here because that determines water height. Down there we had a 10 inch pool. Up here we're gonna, just gonna have a six inch one. And here again, I dug way too big. I'm gonna flip back my liner, I'm gonna set my rocks, and when I'm done, I'm gonna flip it all in and backfill back again. All right, so let's fold out our liner here, and get ready for the next rocks. All right, our rock pad underlayment is in. Now we're ready to bring back the liner. We have our liner in now. Now we're ready to set the last spillway rocks, framing boulders. Thinking one pointed this way, one towards that window. So two of them coming in like this. All right, let's go pick them out, DJ. 